Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm honored to be closing a weekend of tremendous recitals. Um, and I wanted to give a bit of background on some of the music that I'm going to be pre uh, presenting tonight. As some of you know, I'm working on an album, and it's very, very different from what I've done in the past. It's, um, it's much more singer-songwriter focused, um, and although I'm keeping a lot of what uh, I have been learning in composition classes and, and you know, using harmonic and melodic ideas that, um, that come from more like the classical idiom, uh, I wanted to try something new. So just a little bit about why I decided to, uh, to write an album. So during quarantine, um, when all of us were kind of cooped up, I started to listen to full-length recordings much more often. I was inspired by so many different artists and musicians and, um, and bands. And th they all have their own way of recording and making music that um, is unique to them. I, I found that really, really interesting. And um, I love the idea of having a collection of music that you could, um, that you could look back on, you know, like fond memories, and, uh, and it, uh, something that tells a story. That's really what I wanted to do, a collection of music that tells a story. So I decided that for my final year, I would make an album of my own, and uh, the School of Music, I, I just pitched it to the School of Music, and they were very, very open about it, which is, I, I found that fascinating, um, especially because it's, it's not necessarily completely in the classical idiom. I, I thought that was more of the academic approach, but I mean, I pitched it, and I got it, and it's just, uh, it was really, really a great, great honor. And so I made that a joint project between my EA composition class with uh, Dr. Derek Chark and my, um, my music production class with Professor Mark Adam. And doing it in this method helped s tremendously with deadlines because I know myself that if I did it alone, I wouldn't get it done in time. No chance, not at all. So uh, they were both fantastic sounding boards for all of my ideas and, and crazy, crazy thinking. Um, really, really great uh, that I was able to get that opportunity with those classes. And another challenge that I put on myself for this year was to take vocal lessons. I have wanted to do that for a long, long time. I, s I took vocal lessons for a very brief stint, but um, it wasn't really, you know, I didn't really take it, if you get what I mean. Um, so I was all in for it, and uh, so that was with Dr. Uh, Michael Donovan, and he really, really helped in in terms of building confidence in my own singing ability, and uh, with technique and in vocal performance. So, like I said before, most of my experience in composition has been in the classical idiom, and. With this project, I was really curious to see how it would translate to a singer-songwriter uh, genre. I was curious to see, okay, like how would it sound? Would it sound much different from, from the past? Would it be um, completely, you know, basically the same? Like, what, what would it actually end up being? I was really curious. And also with popular forms as well, with like verse and chorus structures, I'm not as familiar, I wasn't as familiar with those as like, binary, ternary form, that kind of thing, um, which is more the classical idiom. So now with the method of composition, uh, normally when I get an idea, I would put it directly on manuscript. And it has worked for many, many composers, it has worked for me. It's a great, great visual approach to composition. I wanted to try something different because I knew that I would be performing my own music. Uh, very, very different from what I'm used to be doing is, um, you know, writing music or uh, putting ideas on, on manuscript and sending it off to others to, to perform. This is a very, very new thing, and I wanted something a little bit more performance-based in, in terms of literally recording my ideas. So that's what I did. Every single time I had an idea, I would take my phone out and start recording. And I found that ideas were much easier to 
to maintain, to develop, um, and to generate just with that little thing, just, just with the phone. Um, and it's probably a method that I'm gonna come back to, but especially for this one, where I'm gonna be performing, all, well, I have performed all of this music, it's, um, it was a great method. So um, I just wanted to say, uh, Max Gallant, who uh, is a former uh, Acadia School of Music student, graciously agreed early on to record percussion for the entire record. So a massive thank you goes out to him. I would not be able to do this without you, Max. Thank you so much. So I sent him these little phone recordings, these really, really short little snippets of ideas, and with basically little other inf information, that's it. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to hear what his take on those little ideas would be. And when I was able to get them sent back to me, I would hear the big picture, or kind of a bigger picture from what that little initial idea was, and that was a really, really great approach. So this kind of back and forth process allowed the seeds, like the really small little seeds of ideas to grow into something that it is now, which is really, really great. Uh, so it's probably a method that I'm gonna keep on doing from now on, it's really, really interesting. So yeah, so now on to the music itself. I'm gonna start with uh, Love Scars, and it is based on a very, very simple idea, as all of them are, very, very simple idea. So, this chord, it's just structured in fifths, that's it. And I really like the idea of having just very, very simple harmony close in on itself. It's actually uh, an idea that I put on another piece of music called Closing In. I really, really like that idea. So um, I liked it so much that I, I wrote a piece, uh, an another song with that idea. So this is Love Scars. Cosmic tides bring forth signs Shadow the skies to cleanse my eyes The best of dark and bright into full I will feed the sunlight in your storm Within the comfort of her skin, through the music of her voice. Never thought I'd find the gate in this whirlpool space till I saw her face. I saw her face. Never 
thought I'd find the gate in this whirlpool space till I saw her face. Thanks so much. For this next one, um, it's much more reflective and quiet, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, it's also very, very simple. It starts with a very, very simple idea. And actually, all of it is based on the initial piano introduction. All of it. All of the harmony is just based from that simple idea. Um, and I recorded it basically the same exact way um, like way back when. I would say early last year, the exact same way, nothing has been changed. Um, the same exact piano introduction. So here is Now I Know.
Till forever, keep breathing today. Until forever, so much. And uh, for this last tune that I'm going to be playing myself, um, it's actually the title of the entire album itself. Uh, and again, very, very simple idea. Uh, the initial idea actually stays the same all the way through, and it basically contains notes. So if I'm just playing this right now, just built in um, just fifths, right? A flat and E flat. And sometimes I play it like a uh, sus chords, a sus chord, so neither major or minor. So it has this kind of uh, sus sound. And from that suspended sound, I would go from major or I would go to minor. So actually, what's really interesting about this one is that it doesn't actually exist in any specific key. And that's a lot of about what I, uh, how I write music. It's not in a specific key usually. Um, I use a lot of like modal mixture and that kind of thing. Um, but for this one especially, I, I even have it written A flat minor slash major. Like it's just, it could be either or. So here's the way from here. Getting too much 
the time breathe with you in spirit interconnected souls to touch show me the way from here show so much. Um, and this last piece um, it actually has a really interesting story to it. You know how all of these compositions have one thing in common? They're just coming from a simple, simple idea, just a grain of information. Maybe for now I know it has a little bit more, but um, for most of these songs, just a very, very simple grain of information. Um, for the last track off the record, and the last track, or last tune, I should say, um, uh, for this recital, is an EA composition, electroacoustic composition, that um, is completely based on not necessarily an idea that I had recently, or um, even last year. It all comes back from uh, a simple improvisation that I did in 2019. and. Um, uh, another former Acadia uh, alumnus, Nathan Can, recorded it for me. Uh, actually, he recorded it for his McGill submission, but I was able to uh, have a copy and I obtained a copy from that, a really, really high quality WAV file from it. And so I manipulated it. And as you will hear, all of the sound that's not the voice is off of that, um, off of that same exact improvisation. 
So I was able to manipulate it in different ways and uh, have it make different sounds. But everything is from that improvisation, which I found really interesting. So I hope you enjoy a moment in time. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs>